still on the run and on the FBI's most wanted list, Robert Fisher murdered his family when confronted with divorce in April of 2001. Robert's parents divorced when he was young, and by all accounts, it was an especially difficult event. In fact, his parents' last screaming fight was at Disneyland when Robert was age 14, and he would later refuse to take his own children to Disneyland because of this traumatic event. Once employed at the Mayo Clinic Hospital, he confided to a co-worker that his life would have turned out different if his mother had not left his family. In 1987, he married Mary Cooper, and relatives said that he wasn't close to people, including his family, for fear of becoming close only to lose them. He developed a close bond with his dog, Ruger, and when talking about his dog to a friend at one point, the friend told Robert it sounded as if he was talking about some girl. Robert's mother said his family life with Mary and their two children resembled Robert's childhood family. An avid fisherman, hunter, and all-around outdoorsman, Robert once told a hunting mate that he was renewing his commitment to his faith and marriage because he could not live without his family. In 1998, Robert revealed to a pastor at his family's church that he had a one-night affair with a prostitute who gave him a urinary tract infection. He was worried his wife would find out about his infidelity because of the, the infection, and it seems she did. In the weeks leading up to the carnage, Mary told her friends she was planning a divorce. She even got a job to save for a security fund which was likely a nice way of saying she needed to be able to afford to leave her husband. Meanwhile, Robert was vowing that his children would never go through a divorce like he had. Robert's feelings of insecurity related to losing his family and other important people in his life led him to be very controlling of the people around him. A family friend said that Robert once told his children what time to get up, what time to go to bed, what clothes to wear, and what to eat. He also taught his children to swim by tossing them out of a boat. He once humiliated his wife by turning a garden hose on her right after she woke up. Mary was only allowed to paint the walls white with only a few pictures on the walls. When Mary's mother would do motherly things for Mary, such as make her a quilt, she was not allowed to hang them up, Mary's friend told police. She had to store them in the closet, and then he would continually tell her, isn't it time you got rid of some of this stuff? He enjoyed sneaking up on families who were picnicking and unloading a 9mm pistol into the air frightening and therefore controlling everyone present. He also once loaded a gun, cocked it, put it to a friend's head, and then uncocked the gun and said, isn't that cool? But there was nothing cool or lighthearted about the way Robert treated his family and friends, and it was no wonder his wife was ready to leave. However, she would never get the chance. On the evening of April 9th, the couple had a very loud argument around 10.30 p.m. The next morning, at approximately 8.42 a.m., Bill Jacoby, who lived three doors down from the Fishers, heard what he described as a tremendous explosion. He went on to say, I've heard propane tanks go up before, and that's what this sounded like. My two cats went straight up in the air. During the night or early morning, Robert shot Mary in the back of the head while she slept. He then went to the children's bedroom, 
Brittany, age 12, and Robert Jr., age 10, and slit their throats from ear to ear while they slept. He tried to cover up the homicides by pulling out the gas line from the back of the home's furnace, and the accumulated gas was eventually ignited by a candle at the other end of the house. Robert then made a fast escape using the family's SUV, which was discovered 10 days later abandoned with a pile of human excrement outside the passenger door. Police have not found Robert Fisher. Some have speculated that he walked into the wilderness to either survive or commit suicide, and others have suggested he is alive and working at a menial job under an assumed name. If Robert is alive and living under an assumed name, he would be one of over 200,000 American fugitives who are doing so successfully. The most successful identity changers are those who travel to foreign countries. The self-sufficient outdoor types, such as Fisher, most often head for Canada or Central America. Adding to this theory that Robert is living in the wilderness, or at least was at the time of the murders, is the fact that he did not withdraw any money from the family bank account and police have found no other sources of income he might have utilized. Also, the night before the murders, he purchased a water purifier which would provide him with fresh drinking water in the woods. It's likely that if he did survive in the woods for some time, he may have since come out of the woods and begun working menial jobs under an assumed name. There is a $100,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of Robert Fisher. <laughs>